That was pretty cool because like camping, you know, like fishing. Well, I think they're doing this because they wanted to do those water samples and fish experiments, stuff like that, and wanted to get us kids and elders together. So, hi, I'm Paul, and I'm the fish biologist who's been working with the <laughs> communities every year, going from location to location. And I'll just give a quick summary of what we need to do in terms of the fish. So, all of you have some concerns, or the Tuicho in general have concerns about fish health. So what we plan to do is take 20 whitefish and 20 lake trout, where I'll show you how we process the fish for Western science in order to test whether the meat is good to eat and how much of it is good to eat. Now that being said, I wouldn't worry because all your areas are very good in water quality and food fish. So with those 20 fish of each species, we take a small sample of the meat and I'll show you how we package that and it's sent out to a laboratory. And then the same fish will be able to age by taking out the little bone in the head, some of you have seen me do already. And that's the same like when a tree is cut down and you count the rings. It's the same thing with that little bone. You can tell how old the fish is. Why do we need to know that? Because we want to be able to tell if big fish are a little more contaminated than small fish, or like last year in Snare Lake, the very big lake trout was six times more contaminated than the normal size. That was the biggest fish in many years, at least, caught on the lake. Now I should warn you, when I use the word contaminated, presently in the lakes that we survey, in the Tlicho area, these were normal levels. There is mercury in the rock, there is mercury in the water. We just want to make sure it's not above the normal background levels. That's all. So don't get scared when you hear the word mercury or arsenic even. These things are everywhere in the world. It's just when they're in big concentrations, sometimes from mining, that we need to worry. We'll be taking different water samples from the lake and these get sent, we'll bring them actually to uh, the Taiga lab in Yellowknife and in a very controlled, clean lab setting they do all the tests that they need to do with this very specific equipment that we don't, we can't take here. They're teaching us how to make sure that our water is healthy and if the fish are healthy and if they're good enough to eat. Tu nie, ty nie chodzisz, 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 ty nie
I learned how to set up a net properly, how to put away the net, and got to learn more about the land. You gotta watch it carefully for your fingers fingers not to get caught in, in between the in between the ropes and the net and you just gotta make sure it goes smooth and make sure it doesn't get tangled and stuff like that. I'm learning how to make dry fish, but I've learned how to make bannock. So it's a pretty good experience. I cut open a fish and fried it for the first time. Pretty good. <laughs> well, today I made dry fish, which is my first time. And when I made that, I went no good, so I have to throw that away. I think because not much, we don't have the opportunity in class. We only learn our language, not how to cook culturally. And so it's a good opportunity to go on the land with the elders and learn it from the people who know it best. I love to be on the land because it's the best to learn. And once, if we have kids or so, so we can pass it on to them. I finally know how to make bannock. I'm planning on making some for my mom when I get back home. It's <laughs> I'd just like to say that uh, this is the first time for me uh, to be in a fish camp and I felt that it was a traditional, it must have been how a traditional fish camp is, a traditional culture. And I felt that by the end of the time here, that it, you know, it was like a community. We were living among each other, and I love that feeling. Um, it's an honor to be here, share, and be on the land, to learn from your elders. And I'm speaking to the youth when I say that there's a lot of there's a lot on your shoulders, and I hope that you take this kind of thing very seriously because your elders are very uh, incredible people. They're the keepers of the land. They're really honorable people and 
you're gonna need to, you have beautiful, beautiful fish and water here, and you're gonna need to keep it that way. So it's gonna be on you. I hope that this meant something to you, because this is very, very special. I'd just like to thank the young adults who came out here, and a lot of you will be finishing school and leaving, that you guys, Listen to the elders and listen to their stories. Because if you guys are going, you'll be leaving south, going other places. And if you know where you came from and you know your beliefs, at least you'll know who you are when you're gone. Um, I'd like to thank Louis and Grace for Lydia's Easter cabin or their land. And I'd like to thank them for the experience they gave me. I'd like to help them. That's good. Um, also, I'd like to thank the cooks we taught and Mary Adele, and I had a lot of fun and experience here. It's good. I like to do this more often. Go out on the land with our art out here. I would like to learn more about the land, learn more about my culture. Also, it was a lot of fun playing hand games with her. Even though we lost the round, she entertained everybody. Everybody laughed. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, I hope to do it next year or next four years from now again. Yes, I have to do it. 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 I think that everybody. Uh, uh, has to I'm going to go to the